Blessings on all of you. Welcome to the service for 31 January of 2021. This is the fourth Sunday of the Epiphany season. Our opening hymn is number 493 in the hymnal, or 4,000 tongues to sing. We'll do all six verses.
give you as a light to the nations. That my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. We'll recite together Canticle 11 on page 87 of the Book of Common Prayer, commonly known as the Third Song of Isaiah. You'll find that on page 87, Canticle number 11. And we say this in unison. Arise, shine, for your for light, light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night. They will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction is in your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. First lesson is from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said, "The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet, a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet." This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, "If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die." Then the Lord replied to me. They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like, like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. The appointed psalm is Psalm 111. That's found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 754. Psalm 111, page 754 in the prayer book. 
possibly by half verse. By half verse. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor. And his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works. In giving them the land of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All of his commandments are sure. They stand, they stand fast forever and ever. Because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today's second lesson is a reading from 1 Corinthians. <clears throat> now, concerning food sacrifices to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol. And their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you, who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrifices to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their failing, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our graduate hymn is Peace Before Us. We'll sing the four verses. I'll read the gospel lesson and we'll sing the Alleluia to the same tune uh, after the reading. <laughs>
our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. <laughs> holy and living God. Amen. Amen. We have this notion that the synagogue is where you go for services, worship stuff. But synagogues were actually a place for teaching and learning. It was a place where scripture was read and there were discussions. And it was in this situation that Jesus has come. He's come to a synagogue in Capernaum, his disciples attending with him. And so he does what you do when you're the teacher, you sit down. So he literally sits among them, not stands. We have no clue exactly what the scripture portion was that he was responding to, we didn't know if he was the one that was called to read. So we don't know if he picked what scripture or that there was one appointed to be read for the day. Because all of that was sort of mm, eclipsed by the events that followed. I know that sometimes the mundane in my own life things that are just part of the normal sequence of things disappear when something climactic or big, positive or negative, happens. And suddenly you forget all of the stuff that happened that day and you only remember what happened in that event. And it becomes a struggle to remember and I would think the Gospel of Mark with its insistence on everything being like right now and very immediate would not write down the scripture portion. There are other places in the gospel where they say exactly what Jesus was reading or exactly what he was teaching. But he did so with authority, unlike the scribes. I don't know if that also meant the Sadducees and the Pharisees, each of them religious parties within the, the, the Jewish structure. And somehow this one voice that's not exactly associated with any of those groups speaks and the people hear him. Now at the expense of making someone unhappy, I will say you gotta remember it was the men that were there. That's who was in the synagogue. And so this teaching was a new teaching to them. We don't know what. 
We don't find that out. What we got is the headline news of the rest of the lesson. So there was amongst them a man with an unclean spirit who speaks in the plural. What do you, what do you have to do with us? I thought that was interesting. Because when Jesus then speaks to the unclean spirit, he speaks in the singular. Go away. Be out of here. And the man to whom he has spoken has a seizure of sorts. And he's laying there or standing there or whatever. And it's their observation that right that second, that unclean spirit has left him. So from that point on, besides the fact that they make a comment about how absolutely wonderful this was, well, I guess they really didn't say wonderful, though, did they? They just noted that they hadn't run into this before. This, this was another change. First the teaching is different, and now the actions are different. Oh, my. We don't hear anything out of the man. from whom the spirit has been nixed. But do we hear what? People talking. Who is this Jesus? And as we are wont to know, when you have an event that's noteworthy, and you don't have Twitter, and you don't have Facebook, you don't have telephones, and you don't have electricity, then it's got to travel by word of mouth. And suddenly this baby is starting to spread. That fame, based on these miracles, Jesus pays a price for that because his Abilities in the Gospel of Mark to heal the sick and to command the spirits and to speak some kind of a truth that is new, a teaching that is different. That's a challenge to the people who have or perceive that they have the authority. And We've watched that play out in this country in the last year about when your authority is challenged, what kind of things can come of that. If you think you're about to lose something because somebody else has gained something, that fear is a real one. But as I have mentioned before, uh, um, a book I read on what life was like during New Testament times that honor and knowledge and power were all, especially the honor thing, were, were, were limited quantities. And so if, a, if you've been honored by a community of people, but then somebody else comes to that community and that other person is now being honored, that means you lost something. And the other person has gained it. It's like you've got eight ounces of honor and you've got all eight in your cup. And somebody comes along and takes the cup out of your hand and gives you two ounces of it back, but six ounces went to the other person. And that's a diminishment. So honor, in this case, is probably going to set up those very same scribes. And you know by word of mouth that it's not going to go just to a limited group of people, but the story is going to get spread big, really big. We watched that happen just a year ago here, when the story that was being told about us was really big when we were doing something kind of small. 
We thought it was a miracle welcoming one person on campus who didn't have a home. But the story had gone out and become bigger and bigger and bigger. And pretty soon, the stories going around where the place was going to be crawling with folks who are homeless, and we knew that that was going to be followed by drugs and trash and RVs. It was a really interesting time for us. COVID hit just five weeks later. And something bigger came along. And this small thing that we had going here, the first steps of being a help to unhoused and housing insecure persons was interrupted by a much bigger thing. So I don't want you to forget that we did that and we made those steps. And we gained friends in places where we would not have expected to have had them. And we made enemies where we didn't think they existed. That's what happens when you think that honor is a small category of things. Just like safety is a small category. It is a limited quantity and so we were taking away their sense of safety. So I want to reflect just for another minute or two, not long, about the incredible strides that we made here in this congregation. We were on the edge of doing something really different. And we were gonna get stood up for that but we had others standing with us, people that we were not expecting. Staff at City Hall, the mayor came to visit. <laughs> We've always had the, the, the support of PRC and that's a very symbiotic mutual relationship. We, neither of us thinks that, that, that generosity and grace and dignity is a limited quantity. So we work together really well. and the police chief, and some of his officers checking up on us to make sure everything was okay. We weren't expecting that, but that came with us. COVID has taken away a lot of opportunities and a lot of memories and, and uh, a lot of eating out and a lot of going to movies and hanging out with family and having a normal birthday because by now in this cycle almost every one of us has had a birthday during the, at the era of COVID. Some of you may even be getting pretty close to having your second birthday in the time of COVID. But I want you to be proud of what, we occur, what, what was occurring and the courage that you were showing up until that time. And now a different kind of courage is here. The courage to overcome that desire to have everything like it used to be. Like Jesus walking into the synagogue, it was never gonna be the same. COVID walking into our lives have pro has proven to us that we can be the church, whether the building is occupied or not. We figured out with Rudy's help that we can actually put out a service that we tape one evening and, and a couple of days later goes live on YouTube because we now know YouTube is there to help. For those of you who've never been on YouTube until then, welcome. St. Edmund's YouTube Church. Change is a hard thing. And I know we're anticipating the time when COVID is over, but I don't want to forget some of the lessons that we will learn here as well. That we are still a community. We're still the body of Christ. We're still St. Edmund's in Pacifica, and I'm awfully proud of you about how you're all been hanging in there, showing up off and on to coffee hour or sending me a note or, 
or whatever it is to, to remind us that we're still together. And that's encouraging for me too. Because every week I preach to a, essentially an empty church building, but not to an empty church. So if I could, I would walk out, even getting up on the roof, God help me, and say, COVID, come out of them, and it would disappear. But like the first lesson said, if you start speaking like that, and that's not what God told you to say, it's not going to go well. Your life will be over. So love within us, peace within us, Christ within us, as we have been homeless church people for a year now, come and close, a few more weeks. That is not a celebration, but it is a mark of change. Jesus walked into a synagogue and taught them with authority and they were amazed. And he cast out the unclean spirits and they were amazed again and that set them talking. So maybe, maybe we're going to get called to be that voice in whatever time it takes for us to be safe to come in, into this church together. And I'm figuring we're going to have to block out a whole day starting with church and then we're all going to have to be in small groups and just talk as fast as we can and listen as quick as, as possible. Because there's so much to say and so much gladness and bring a hanky or a couple of Kleenex. Because we're going to be that glad to see each other. The day is coming. The day to be agents of change is already here. Let us pray that God uses us as a witness to those changes. Join me in reciting the words of the Apostles' Creed, Book of Common Prayer, it's on page 96. The Apostles' Creed, page 96. I believe in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our hymn before the prayers is Lord Make Us Servants. It's hymn number 593, 593. Lord Make Us Servants of Your Peace.
two in the Book of Common Prayer that's found on page 385. Form two, page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Mark, our bishop, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by the Lord. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially Hank Aaron, Cloris Leachman, Cicely Tyson, your prayers for those on our prayer list, for Angie and family, Derek, David, Joan, Stephen T., Dan, Curcio997, Evangeline, Lucille, Julie and Tom, Cara, Dick T., Sean, Will, Darlene, Ronwa, Carol, Christine, Liz, Seth and Ronan, Dalton, Erica F., Joe, Robin A., Claire and Josh, for Ellen, Diane T., Reverend Stacy, Ben B., Gail, Alex, and Paloma. And for Helen, Kathy, and family, Chuck, Betsy and family, Bud, Jana, and family, Casey, Ann, and family, Verl and family, Dave, Grant, and Vanessa, Frank, Eileen, and family, Sophie, Ellie, and family, Patrick, Diane, and William, Brad, and Barbara, healthcare workers, and Eddie, and family. For Jan, Jim, Shirley, and family, for Antonio, and family, Catherine, HK, for our homeowners association, for all deacons, for Darlene, Sebastian and Roland, for Marnie and family, for Joan and her daughter Shirley, for Tecla, Erica, Nadia, and Alex, for April and Anacaba, for John, Mylene, and Audrey, for Marjorie, Laura, and Kelly, and for Bob, Will, Emily, and their family. And for Ellen and Jason, Alexandria, Joe and Karen, Mindy and Itzik, Shea, Jean, Karima, Lori C, Mike, Sean and family, Joe and Michael, Trevor, Miles and Diana, Nick and Michael, Jackie C, and Josh and Sue. And for Nick G, Jackie R, Jackie B, Shirley L, Peter, Rose, Papa Joe, Ruby G, Michelle R, Christine, Matt, Vanessa, Jane, Lucille, 
Angel X, Catherine, and Rhonda. And for Barbara and family, Ian and family, Sandy and Jaden, Tuffy, David C and family, the Kirkpatrick family, Sarah, Peter and Shannon, Shirley, Jennifer and Tom, Kevin G, Steve and Ernie, the Caravan for Peace, Lowell and Susan, and Mariah and family. And for Jim, Angie, Pamela and family, for military chaplains, for the Pacifica Resource Center, for Alan, Amy, Lillian and family, for Janine and Pat, the Wong family, for Joan, Joseph, Rosiana and the grandchildren, for John Arthur, Beatrice and Lincoln, for John, Elizabeth and their community, for Janet, Eileen, and Rose, for the Reverend Joe Holt and his family, for Danny F., and for John and Susan. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. And as our Savior has taught us, so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. suffrages on page 98 in the Common Prayer Book, and then the letter A, page 98, and this is responsive. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and, and grant, grant us, us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, let, let your, your people sing with joy. joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Join me in reciting the general thanksgiving prayer on page 101 of the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray you give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And the ever classic announcements. First of all, we made the newspaper, thank you Linda Peebles. Um, with a picture on the last page that shows uh, 
What's the name of the new paper that I found? Is it the Pacifica Tribune? It's the Pacifica Tribune. Pacifica Tribune. And we're on the back page where uh, you'll see pictures of uh, uh, the peace people and the peace pole that we now have planted on the property. And uh, I was pleased to see that, you know. Those, all, those, all those peace people up, up, up by St. Edmunds, you know. <laughs> all those peaceful people. Bring in their RVs. <laughs> that's it, bringing in those people in their RVs. Um, <laughs> that's right, Doug. And um, uh, Brian Wismer and I continue working on the Blessed to be a Blessing, and uh, we have four sessions sort of mapped out at the moment, and it will start um, the second to the last Sunday in the evening on Feb in February. We'll let you know the exact time. He and I are negotiating that. So it's uh, the last two Sundays of February and the first two Sundays of March, roughly paralleling um, the, the Lenten season. Um, I'm trying to figure out how we're gonna get ashes to everybody for Ash Wednesday, uh, because I'll do a service here um, with just probably Rudy and me uh, for Ash Wednesday. And uh, we'll do just a quiet service of the blessing of ashes, and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do about getting ashes to all of you as well. Um, so, so hang in there. We'll we'll figure all this out. I appreciated a a, a posting that came up um, on Facebook that says, uh, "How how can you celebrate four things in four days?" And so I had to read further because I had no idea what they were talking about. So Valentine's is the fourteenth and President's Day is the 15th, and Mardi Gras is the 16th, and Ash Wednesday is the 17th. Wow. So they had little icons of all of those things. Uh, uh, it was just interesting. Um, I hadn't thought about that, so that, that was kind of amazing. Um, <sighs> I think that's all I have for today, believe it or not. Um, We'll, we'll chat more next week, and I hope to see you uh, coffee hour after services. Go for it, Dad. I'll give you the library report. We're continuing to, <laughs> continuing to make progress on that. I want to thank uh, both Janet and Betsy, who uh, uh, Betsy was over here making me look uh, uh, very lazy by all her industriousness getting things cleaned up here but both Janet and Betsy made some efforts to get things clean we're still working on getting the rest of it clean and sorting through the books and things we managed to put a bunch of them into the uh, back room over here so that uh, they weren't going to be affected by the by the rains coming through here uh, but anybody who wants information about that or wants to help out let me know uh, we can always use uh, we can always use some help in terms of sorting and stuff. Um, and if you want a book, let me know. I'm, I'm getting to know the stacks there pretty well since I've been through them a few times, just in moving them around. Um, and aside from that, um, I want to encourage people to get involved in the community because there's even though we have a new administration, there's plenty of things going on, and we want to keep our country and our democracy safe and available to uh, people for generations to come and that requires as the saying goes eternal vigilance so um, uh, there's Pacifica social justice there's the peace people who are just here putting in the peace poll um, so get in touch with me 650-425-7088 if you want information about those organizations and uh, let's let's keep going with this stuff because uh, we can't wait for the pandemic to be over to work on this stuff because it's all going on all the time. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Mm -hmm. Anybody here are birthdays or anniversaries from anybody? I did not. So we'll proceed to pace then on page 102 in the Book of Common Prayer. I'll pray the prayer of St. Chrysostom. And then we'll move into hymn 594, so you know what's coming. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And 
you have from us through your well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Hymn 594. <laughs>